Hello and welcome to a new One Chord a Week video. Today's chord is a beautiful sounding chord. Sounds complicated on paper, you know, because it has a big name, but it's actually very simple. And I think you'll be able to just turn off the video when you're done and go out and start using it. It's that simple. All right, so let's begin. The major 13th chord is, of course, based on the major 7th chord and is one of the biggest chords available because technically it uses all notes. And um, it completes, I think, the extensions for major that we saw because we did the major triad and the major 7th. Here's a link to that. And then from then on, we added a 9th for the major 9th, which is a beautiful chord. And then we are doing the major 13th, and you might ask, where's the major 11th? And the 11th is not an available extension for a major chord. It's not like it's forbidden, but it doesn't sound good, so it's really not used. But you can't really put an F over an E, and uh, the reason is that there's a rule, and we won't get into all the music theory, but one of the rules for extensions is that an extension that is one half step above a note of a triad is not available as an extension. And so the F is the 11th and the E is the third of the triad and F and E are one half step apart. Besides all that, it just doesn't sound too good. You can try it and it doesn't sound so good. And that's why usually when you have an 11th or a fourth, it becomes a sus4. So you drop the third and then you have your chance to put the 11th in. One exception, of course, is another chord that we did. Here it is, the major 7 sharp 11. What are we doing there? Well, we're fixing it, right? We are taking the F, making it sharp, F sharp. Now it's one, half step, one uh, whole step above the third, E, and so there's no conflict. Okay, so we did the major 7th. We did the major 7 sharp 11th, which is kind of our way of dealing with the 11th. We did the major 9th, and now we're doing the major 13th. All right, so after this, you'll be a master at major chords. So the major 13th chord is based on a major 7th uh, chord with added notes. Uh, before we continue, really quickly, just as we talked about last week about the C 9th chord not being confused with the major 9th chord, we should talk about this one not being confused with the C 13th chord. If you have a major 13th chord, what it means is that it's a major 7th chord with extensions. If you have a C 13th chord, which we already looked at, then you have a C7, a dominant chord, with added extensions, okay? So don't get confused because they're very different chords with very different functions, all right? So how do we build this chord? Well, first of all, we start with a major triad, okay? That's our starting point. And we would have our root, our major third, E, and our perfect fifth, G, all right? Perfect. Now, we should uh, continue with the other note which we need, to start the foundation for this chord, which is the major seventh. Okay, so that will take us down that road of major chords instead of that road of dominant chords. The seventh is the difference. So we would have a B natural because it's a major seventh, it's one half step below the root. So we have C, E, G, B is our major seventh. Now from this starting point, which is the, sev the major seventh chord, we add the ninth, which is D, okay? And then we add the 13th, which is A, or here. You don't have to actually keep going up in octaves. So where's the 11th? Where's the, the F? Well, as we said before, not only you don't build a major 11th chord, you don't even use it within another chord. Now, it's not illegal or anything, right? You can use it, but it, it really doesn't sound good. So. That's, one, that's the first note you drop from the chord. You don't actually even use the 11th. Although technically the formula would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, the 11 is dismissed, okay? And then, even then, you see how many notes are here, right? And so there are so many notes in this chord that you won't even usually be able to play them. And so we'll see how we can drop some of them later on as we do our fingering, okay? But this is the formula, root, major third, perfect fifth, major seventh, major second, which is the ninth. We skip the eleventh, which will be an F, and A, major uh, the major sixth. Right? It sounds beautiful and mysterious, and I think the reason is that it has so many notes that your ear will fall 
on one or the other and give it a different color. Now this chord sounds pretty different also depending on the voicing and because you have to choose which notes to lose or to drop then it will sound different than two. So let's talk about that first. What notes we can lose? We talked already about the 11th which is not played, the F. If you're out of fingers or out of strings, uh, there are other notes, of course, you can drop. And the first one would probably be the fifth. So you drop the G. We always do it in many chords that are too rich or too big to play. The G is often dropped because the fifth is really consonant and it doesn't really add much to the proceedings. And the other note you can lose, but you don't have to lose, is the ninth. Okay, so just because an chord has a 13th extension, shouldn't be necessary to play all the previous extensions. So in the case of the 13th, we're, already, we're dropping the 11th with no issue at all, but you can also drop the 9th. Now you don't have to, so you can keep it and play with that interaction between the 6th and the, with the, um, the 9th and the 13th, but otherwise you can drop it, okay? It's not necessary, you're not doing anything wrong. One note you should be careful though you cannot drop is the 7th. You cannot drop the major 7th because otherwise the 13th, which is the six, will start acting like a six. So you will get a six chord, a six nine chord, you know, and all kinds of stuff. But it's not going to be a major 13. If you need the major, if you want the major 13th chord, you need at least the seventh chord underneath, the major seventh chord plus the 13th. Now you can drop the 11, you can drop the ninth, you can drop the fifth if you want. You could even drop the root if somebody else is playing it, but not the major seventh, all right? So that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing is that as far as using it goes, it has a lot of notes in it, so you usually will play it as the one chord, which is in the case of C, then you would put it in C, in the first chord. The reason is that if you are, were actually playing all the notes, including the 11th, then that's it. That's your major scale, there's no other notes left. And so you have to play it in, on the first uh, degree, because if you play, for example, on the fourth degree, then there's, something's going to be wrong there, because then it would be F major right? The actual scale, not just the chord, but the scale. This chord has all the notes of a scale inside it. Now, because we often skip certain notes, so if we skip the 11th, we don't play, it, then this would actually fit over the fourth degree. So you have to be mindful of that. Getting into too much detail on, on that is way beyond this video. It's an advanced uh, theory thing, but just making sure that if you want to use it somewhere else, you know what you're doing, and you make sure that there are no notes that fall outside the key, okay? Now, if they do fall outside the key and you want to go, go ahead with it and play it and, you know, fix it in your, you know, um, or adapt to it with your improvisation, either by ear or because you know what's outside, that's fine. But otherwise, be mindful because if you just play this chord anywhere, then when you fall onto the other major chords, you'll have problems, all right? So that's the first thing that's important. But usually you can play uh, anywhere when there's a one chord and you want, to, you want it to be richer. I really enjoy the sound of it. Sometimes it's hard to manage because it has so much information in it. You know, it's, it really has a lot of information. But what else? Um, you can use it as, um, as an exercise that I really enjoy doing. And this is the last thing I'll tell you because I don't want to bore you. And today's video was going to be short and easy. So this chord is great if you play it on a loop. So you can loop it. And you record a loop of this and you have it as a, as, a, as a pad underneath and you can play small, small, small scales and musical ideas because the chord is so rich that you can actually spend a few minutes on just two or three notes and they will sound great because the notes of the chord and the content of the chord will enrich those notes. And it's very satisfying and it's something I often do with big chords. And I, I always say that a lot of big chords are kind of out of my reach for the music I make because usually it's rock music and I have a lot of clean stuff, but I also have a lot of distorted stuff. And with distortion, you can get away with a lot of notes in a chord. It sounds, you know, all muddy. And so uh, it's something that I really enjoy. And when I can do it, I, I do it. I use these very complex chords and I use maybe two simple chords that together give you a complex chord. You know, I get very detailed with the harmonic content and then on top I can use a very simple melody, which I really enjoy. You know, to me melodies should be the shorter and the simpler the better. And uh, it's, a, it's a magical effect because every time you play over this chord, depending on what note is being emphasized by the playing, then your melody will sound different without ever leaving the key. Okay, so I could talk about this for hours, but the most uh, intelligent thing to do is you go out and try it, okay? Because 
there's nothing I can tell you that you won't find out in like two seconds I mean, when you do it, right? So definitely try jamming on top of this with very simple uh, scales. And I'll give you one uh, in just a couple of minutes. All right, so let's see a few fingerings for this chord. I think you'll find them beautiful sounding. And uh, here's the first one we already saw. We play the fifth G on the third fret of the sixth string. Then our root is C on the third fret of the fifth string. We let the fourth string ring out, open, and then we play an A, which is our sixth or thirteenth, on the second fret of the third string, that's A. And then we let ring open the second and first string, that's our B and E. Okay, beautiful chord. If you look at the notes we're playing here, we have our C, our E, and our G. That's our major third, uh, a major triad. Then we have the B for the major seventh, the ninth D, and the thirteenth A. So it's a very complete thirte major thirteenth chord. This one. The only note that's missing is the eleventh, which, as we already talked about, it's actually a note you don't want to play. So this is a very complete sounding major thirteenth chord. And that's the one I suggested you jam on because it really has all the information of the chord right there. So that's the first position. For the next position, we go up to the eighth fret of the sixth string, and we're playing the root, of course, on the on the eighth fret of the sixth string. And then uh, we skip the fifth string as we often do in this position, and then we play these two notes with a little bar here on the ninth fret. And we're playing a B, which is our major seventh, and the E, which is our um, our third, the major third. And then again we bar, but with the little finger, on the tenth fret, the top two strings, and we have the A, which is the thirteenth, and the D, which is the ninth. So it sounds beautiful. It sounds like a major 13th chord, but here you can see that you can drop a few notes. And again, we drop the 11th, we're not playing the F, but we also are not playing a G. There's no fifth and it doesn't matter. The sound of the chord remains intact, all right? So that's an example of dropping some notes. And here's another position that I really enjoy. It's another inversion, it starts on the A, so it starts on the 13th, and uh, it's on the 12th fret of the fifth string, so that's A. Then we have a bit of a stretch here to the first finger which is our root C, and then we bar these three strings, and that gives us G, B, and E. So fifth, major seventh, and the major third. Okay, so we have this sound, which is certainly beautiful, but when we look at the notes, we have the root C, E, and G, so we have our major triad. We have a B, which is the major seventh, which we saw that we cannot skip. But then we go straight to the 13th. So in this case, there's no 9th, and of course there's no 11th. Okay, so this one is an example of a major 13th chord that doesn't use the previous two extensions. It just falls right on top of the major 7th foundation. And of course it works. Now, sound-wise, it can be confused with many other chords, and I'll leave it up to you, but you can, you can do an exercise. You can try seeing this chord with all its notes. Try to see it as an A chord and you'll get a very different uh, formula and a very different chord name. The reason is that when you get so many notes together, there are many ways to see these chords, and usually the actual true function of this chord depends on the context. So what are the bass player and the other guys playing? What's the root? You know, where are we going after this chord? Because they become more and more ambiguous as you add more notes. But certainly you can go ahead and use this as a regular major 13th chord, then you'll be fine, but be mindful that bigger chords become more ambiguous. So as promised, let's see a couple of scales that can work with this chord. Now, if we consider the major 13th chord just strictly from the formula, so C, E, G, B, D, F, and A, there's only one scale we can use, because this chord is actually a whole scale within the chord, right? Because it's using seven notes. So if we were to think of C major 13th with a guitar that can play all seven notes, like a seven string, but also probably tuned differently because it's impossible, I think, to get to all of them. And if we don't skip the 11th, there's not much we can do. So strictly speaking, we only can play C major. 
because he has the same notes as the chord C, E, G, B, and then the extensions. D is the ninth, F is the eleventh, and A is the thirteenth. So that's the first thing. So certainly you should practice playing with the major scale. Maybe emphasizing a different note, right? Each time you play. Right, you can try emphasizing different notes of the chord as you play and see what happens. Um, if we consider that the 11th is not played, and if we assume we are not playing the 11th, and we trust everybody else to know that the 11th is not played, then we could venture a bit outside. We could go to the Lydian scale, because the Lydian scale raises the 4th, so the 11th would be raised. It wouldn't agree with the strict formula of the chord, but it would agree with a chord like this, where the 11th is not played. There's no conflict. Right? Because I'm not playing the 11, but strictly speaking, I wouldn't be able to because the formula of the major 13th chord does include the 11th. So I don't know if it's clear, but uh, if you want to be practical, you can probably use Lydian. But if you want to be strictly theoretical, then probably you shouldn't. So another option would be the major pentatonic, because the major pentatonic doesn't deal with the 11th and, and is no issue at all. It doesn't have an F. And so we could play this chord and just play C major pentatonic. And we see that we have the root, the second, the major third, we skip the fourth, so there's no issue there. We have the fifth, the sixth, which is the thirteenth, and the root. And it works. And it's, uh, to me, sounds a bit um, flat, but you know, that's what I was saying earlier. You can do something interesting rhythmically with this very complex chord. And then the pentatonic will certainly take on a new sound depending on what note you're emphasizing at the time. So I would try both of these. I would be mindful and careful with the Lydian, just in case. Very well, we got to the end of the video. I was planning on doing something very short today and very simple, but as always, we kind of get carried away because there's so much to talk about about each chord. I hope it wasn't confusing and I hope uh, it wasn't too much information, but hopefully it was useful. If it was, please maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe spread the word a little bit with your friends if they're into guitar playing, and I hope I can help them out and you out learning new chords. So I will see you next week with a new one. In the meantime, play a lot of guitar, and if you write music, put it out there so we can listen to it. Okay? Have a great one. Bye-bye.